Hello everybody and welcome to this week's From Theory to Practice where I take a look at the research so you don't have to. Now the article I've selected this week is called Course Grades as a Signal of Student Achievement Evidence on Grade Inflation Before and After COVID-19 by Goldhaber and Goodman Young. Now why did I select this article? A couple weeks ago I was at a conference and another presenter there made the bold statement that there was no appreciable learning loss during COVID-19. Now that statement sounded like absolute nonsense, because if you just look at standardized test scores, you see massive drops during COVID-19. So if we look at international PISA scores during COVID, we see the biggest collective drops in the history of this test. So math scores dropped about 15 points, reading about 10 points, and science about two points. Now to put that into context, this is the equivalent of one full year and about two thirds of a year worth of learning. That's huge. And in the US specifically, our NAEP test, that's our annual test down here, saw historical record drops across the board. For instance, eighth grade math scores dropped eight points during COVID and only 38% of students were performing above proficiency. And fourth grade reading scores dropped three points and only 37% of students were performing above proficiency. Now these are the lowest levels we have seen in decades. So clearly COVID was harming learning. So where did this guy get off saying that we saw no evidence of learning loss? Well, I went up to him and I asked him afterwards, I said, what are you talking about? And he gave me this paper here academic performance of local high school students during face-to-face -face and bichronous teaching modalities by Reyes and Merced. Now this paper took a look at 115 students before, during, and after COVID lockdowns. And what they found is everyone performed the same throughout. Learning didn't appear to change, which again sounds crazy. So I dug a little deeper. What measure were they using to discuss learning? And it turns out they were using grades. They were saying grades didn't change before, during, and after COVID. Now we have something we can take a look at. Grades, as opposed to standardized tests, did those things change? And if we use that as our measure of learning, what do we see? Well, that's where this research paper came in. This paper took a look at grade data from hundreds of thousands of students across the entirety of Washington State from 2012 to 2022 to see, was there any change? And here's what they found. Just taking a look at math performance, the percentage of students who achieved A's in the years preceding COVID lockdowns grew from about 25% up to 29%. So we've seen a pretty slow, steady increase of the number of A's given each year, which is great. This could be a reflection on enhanced learning. Students are doing better. Let's see what happened during lockdown. During lockdown, the percentage of A's jumped to 56%. That is nearly double the number of A's achieved during lockdown digital learning. And let's flip it. Let's look at the other side. If we look at the number of F's, so the number of F's given in math before COVID hovered right around 16%, but slowly dropped to an average of about 14%. So again, we're seeing some improvement in student performance over years. But during COVID lockdown, what happened? that value dropped to less than 1%. What if we take a look at some other subjects? English, the percentage of A's during COVID lockdown jumped from about 35% up to 60%, and the number of F's dropped from about 9% to 1%. Science, the number of A's jumped from 33% up to about 59%. Number of F's from 8% down to about 1%. This is across the board. So let's bring this back to us. What does this mean for us as teachers? Well, I can think of three things. First, Grades are subjective, and that's totally fine. Any teacher who's worked in education knows there is nothing about grades that help students learn. In order for something to drive learning, it needs some sort of personal reference, some deep information. I always say, imagine you're driving down a street, you pass one of those speed limit signs, and it says your speed is a C+. There's no information in there that's gonna help me change, adapt, or learn. So grades aren't learning tools. This means when we use grades, there might be other reasons for us to use them. If they're not good for learning, maybe we're using them for confidence. Maybe during lockdowns, we inflated our grading to keep students motivated, to keep them going. Maybe by getting an A instead of a B or a C instead of an F, this helped us and our students continue to fight, to strive, to learn during difficult COVID lockdowns. And if that's the case, I am totally fine with it. There's nothing written in the universe that says we have to have a bell curve. Well, some kids have to get an A, some have to get an F. Maybe if grades simply reflect effort, motivation, and we're using them to drive student engagement, then there's nothing to say 100% of kids can't get A's. So if we just rewrite our thinking about grades, maybe this type of inflation is a good thing in the long run. 
Now, the second thing I'm thinking is, so this comes back to interpreting data. When you've got one group of researchers saying one thing and another group saying the complete opposite thing, our natural inclination is just to join the side that we agree with, assume the other is nonsense. But here we see, just dig a little bit deeper. What data are people using to make these arguments? And it could be that both arguments are correct. It's just the data being utilized is slightly different. In this case, one side is using standardized tests. The other side appears to be using grades. Now you can make a more informed decision. Which set of data do you think speaks more to this concept of learning, then you can start to reconcile different debates. And the third thing that is here, there's a very prominent social communicator out there right now. I'm not even going to call him a scientist because the dude doesn't do research, but he always argues logic, that the problem with the world is that there's not enough logic. And here you see 10 human beings can use the exact same set of data and using the exact same logic, the exact same steps of thinking, arrive at 10 totally different conclusions based on their initial premise. So in this case, if you believe grades reflect learning, then using logic and this set of data, you will conclude that learning actually went up during COVID lockdowns. But if you start with a different premise that grades do not reflect learning, now the exact same set of data and the exact same logic will lead you to a completely different conclusion. In both instances, we used the logic. It was just the opening premise, which changed the final destination that we reached. So I just get really angry when people shut down other people's arguments by saying, oh, that's not logical. No, have a chat with the person, dig into their research, see what it is they're really saying. And you might find they're perfectly logical. You just disagree on the opening premise. Now we can have a real debate. Which premise is more accurate? Maybe simply moving discourse back to that level will help alleviate some of the rifts, the splits, the binary groups we're seeing across education these days. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you got something good from that. And if you like what you saw, if you can give us a thumbs up and subscribe below, it'll make sure more people get a chance to see this on YouTube. Otherwise, thank you all so much and I'll see you at the next one. Bye y'all.